With the, the sugar stamp declaratory, what you need to be able to look at is, okay, what is the law? What does it basically do? How is England going to enforce the law? That's the end of salutary neglect. And then, of course, you want to look at um, what will the colonists do in response. Here we go. With the Sugar Act, it is a tax on sugar, coffee, and wine. So there is the first part. That is part of the definition. Next, here is the part that a lot of people, I think, get mixed up. Grenville's not stupid. He <coughs> wants money. Hand, what is the money for? Ladies and gentlemen, the war is to pay for the soldiers that are now living in America. So what you want to look at is these items do kind of fit together. The next item. Ladies and gentlemen, George Grenville is going to be very public. He is going to come up and come out and announce that the Sugar Act is a tax cut. The six pence a pound was the official sugar act or sugar tax under the Navigation Act. Grenville announces he is lowering the tax. Where's the catch? Ladies and gentlemen. Where people get mixed up here is George Grenville isn't stupid. He realizes whenever you do anything different, people are going to react. So George Grenville is kind of going to give that positive with a negative. Look, a tax cut. We all like tax cuts. The problem is he is trying to argue you are paying three pence less. The reality was that is what colonists really paid. Nobody ever collected the stupid thing. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, what are we getting at? The Sugar Act is the beginning of the end of salutary neglect. England wants money to pay for the proclamation. I'm going to add one more item. The Sugar Act also adds a couple of new enumerated articles. Hand, what's an enumerated article? Ladies and gentlemen, remember mercantilism. An enumerated article is a product that you are told you must sell to mama. You are not able to compete on the free market. Mama only. Under the Sugar Act, we add iron, raw silk, and potash. And although potash may seem silly, it was used in pottery, and I believe it was actually used in gunpowder as well. So ladies and gentlemen, what we want to look at is that will be the law. The next item, so you want to kind of think of in your brain, kind of how do you separate, what we'd like to look at is collection. So how is England going to go about trying to collect this? Number one, the tax book. I mean, pure and simple, England sends more agents. The agents are now being told by the crown to make sure the taxes are collected. So England is enforcing its policy. Two, what we want to understand, folks, is England does not believe that most colonists are bold enough or brave enough to stand up to mother. What England believes is you have a few, what they would call smugglers, unscrupulous individuals who are going to try to cheat. What England wants to make people know is this is the tax, and if you try to cheat, you will be caught. Number two is what is called a writ of assistance. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, a writ of assistance is a blank search warrant. If any of you have a parent, family, friend, brother, or sister who's in law enforcement, this would be the single coolest thing ever. For those of you who ever watch TV shows and stuff, and part of the difficulty of, part of the problem of law enforcement under our current system in the Bill of Rights is they have to follow rules of cause. They have to follow whether it's a warrant, whether it's suspicion, they have to have, be careful when they search. Ladies and gentlemen, a writ of assistance is literally a blank piece of paper that is given by the king or the governor that says, you are an agent, you may search. It doesn't even say where, it doesn't say when, it doesn't have a date, it simply says, you may search. Once again, the primary target is smugglers. Number three, quartering. Ladies and gentlemen, quartering is when soldiers, and folks, think about it from England's perspective. They are having trouble with people paying the tax. They are having trouble with people following the rules. The problem is sending soldiers, sending more help for the tax collectors is expensive, right? It defeats the purpose of the tax. The idea of quartering is the soldiers show up in your town like Elkhorn, and Elkhorn is responsible for housing and feeding the soldiers. The soldiers, if any of you ever watched that old cartoon, Liberty Kids, 
the soldiers would live with the people, right? That would be quartering. Would everybody please leave a number four? There's going to be one more. We're going to come back to that one. Those are enforcement. The tax collector, what do you suppose might happen to a tax collector? And at this time in history, some of you may know this even now in, in England, law enforcement didn't carry weapons. They basically had, I'm the authority, okay? Well, let's be honest, some people ignore them, some people might even talk back to them. If everybody knows that there are seven, eight, ten British soldiers in town, and the British soldiers are at the disposal of the tax collector, it's much more of the tax collector's muscle. Ladies and gentlemen, protests. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go, protests. Number one. Number one, and folks, do you know what we're going to do is, number one, we're going to put with really what was kind of the most common, smuggling. Folks, a form of protest is, and there's two ways to smuggle. One, you bought stuff that was smuggled, or two, you were a smuggler yourself. And if you're not, can anyone clarify, what does it mean? What is a smuggler? Folks, the key item of the smuggled goods is you are basically, it's kind of like black market, you are bringing goods, maybe from even other countries, and you are avoiding the taxes. That's it. Number two, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to love Americans. Number two, and I would honestly argue this is what you would do. Um, the vast majority of you, if Mr. Trottier announces today this is a new policy, this is really, I mean, I've been here long enough, whining. And some of you are like, is that really a protest? I didn't say it's a good protest. I didn't say it's effective. If you want, you can even put the really helpful complaining. Folks, think about it. We do it all the time, right? I don't like that. That's not fair. Whining is a protest. Maybe you even write a letter. This is the problem in most cases. A lot of people whine and they gripe, but very often it doesn't go anywhere. It's a way to show displeasure. And let's be honest, England is probably not going to crack down on something that doesn't have a big effect. Number three? Number three is the most famous one in the Sugar Act. It is led by a man named James Otis. And what you might want to think of, folks, is James Otis is going to start, I guess we could say, an American tradition. Some of you may think it's a stupid tradition. Ladies and gentlemen, Otis, he's not going to pick up a gun. He's not going to get in a fight with a tax collector. James Otis is going to run to court and he's going to sue. James Otis is going to argue that the law is not fair. The law is not just. Specifically, ladies and gentlemen, James Otis comes up with a legal argument. Please understand, the colonists do not want to run around saying we're cheap. We don't want to pay. That's the truth, right? They don't want to pay. They've never had to pay before. Under the law, you need an argument. No taxation without representation. The colonists argue the people in England are represented. In America, we are represented by our parliament. Then what gives the English parliament the right to tax? At this point, there's a big confusion here. Under the word representation, I need you to write two different words. Write direct representation and virtual representation. Ladies and gentlemen, those two ideas are monumentally different. For 100 years, Going back to the House of Burgesses, the people of the 13 colonies got used to direct representation. Ladies and gentlemen, when James Otis says, no taxation without representation, he means we have the right to vote. I should be able to vote on someone who can express my interest. To most of you, that sounds logical because that is what we do in America today. As we begin to start arguing, and trust me, there is some arguing coming in class. The British are confused. In fact, they are baffled. Americans are whining, no taxation without representation. Both the 13 colonies and England are English. What had happened over 100 years? Words began to change. In America, when you say representation, you mean direct. You just say representation. The English believe in virtual. Folks, what is virtual? Virtual representation means someone has taken an oath, has taken a sworn duty that they will look out for, take care of all English people. So please understand, as James Otis and the 13 are shouting, no taxation without representation, the English find their slogan dumb and stupid because Parliament represents all English citizens. 
So please understand, as the protesting begins, there are people in England that don't understand the protest. How can you say you're not represented? We have the parliament. Let's do one more before I go any further. Would you also write down the word constitution? If you want, you can write down written and common. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to be aware of here is how simple and fast little things make words different. Look at the word representation. Literally, the people of England don't understand the slogan. These people are a bunch of whiners. Now look at the word constitution. Folks, in the 13 colonies, the word constitution has come to mean a written document. So as we begin to start arguing about law, the people in the 13 colonies, going back to the Mayflower Compact, believe a constitution must be written. There must be defined parameters. Folks, common constitution. And this is, again, very, very different for us. England, as a society, believes in what is called common law. Do you know what? Here at Elkhorn High School, we often do stuff. For example, we're in homecoming week. Do you know what? If I go over there to the old student council binder, I don't know if all of the homecoming procedures are written down. I mean, I've been here a long time. We do the same thing year after year, but it's not written. Ladies and gentlemen, when you follow what is called past precedent, that is called common law. Basically, in England, what they do is they look back. What happened the last time someone did this? How have we treated this before? I mean, England has been around for several thousand years, and they simply revert back. How have we handled this? And if something new comes up, then they begin to sort of create how do we deal with this particular problem. Please understand, in the colonies, they believe there should be a written guideline. In England, they believe literally in a living history. I should probably give you one more. The last word that also creates confusion is the word sovereignty. And once again, the different the people of the 13 colonies believe it is sovereignty is the government's responsibility to adhere to life, liberty, property. So under sovereignty, it is the, the citizens allowing the government to rule and the government must follow or protect life, liberty, property. In England, it is the absolute authority of the government. So in England, the government basically does whatever it wants, and whatever it does, that is what is good for the people. If you're trying to put it into simple terms, in the colonies, the government serves the people. In England, basically, the government serves itself. And we have one more protest. I can the last protest is cute. It's funny. It's mischievous. This is what the colonists came up with. England, what is it that England so desperately wants? Money. So the colonists announce that they are going to start making paper money. They're going to make Rhode Island money, and Massachusetts money, and Georgia money, and North Carolina money. Kind of like Monopoly money. They would print up the money, and when the tax collector came, they would go here. Money. Ladies and gentlemen, the last protest is in order to pay the taxes, the colonists literally made up or printed up money that was specifically designed for one purpose, to pay your taxes. If you quickly flip over to enforcements, remember I said four? Folks, England kind of does, all right, that was clever, we get it, worthless paper, ha ha, you paid in money. So England passes what is known as the Currency Act. The Currency Act says taxes can only be paid in English pounds or gold or silver. So you can no longer make funny colonial money, you can no longer sort of just make up your own currency, taxes must be paid in established money. Last item. Ladies and gentlemen, despite everything on your notes, despite all that we talked about, the Sugar Act was relatively effective. Um, if I didn't say so, the Sugar Act was collecting over 200,000 pounds a year. So you are, with simple math, 60,000 pounds short. Folks, the number one thing you want to identify is the Sugar Act, even though there was some arguing, there was some whining, there was even a legal attempt, for the most part, was effective. 
England was getting what it wanted. It was getting money to pay for their proclamation. Please understand, what happens next is going to focus on this. Ladies and gentlemen, whether this is an epic blunder, a logic vision, Mr. Grenville simply wants the rest of the money. Mr. Grenville makes the decision to impose a second tax. Sure sounds dumb to take Cleveland. S is sugar, the second S is stamp. So ladies and gentlemen, we are at the Stamp Act. Please remember, this by very definite is designed to be a small tax, a baby tax. It is designed to make up what was not being collected. Once again, the money is for the proclamation. The Stamp Act is a tax on all paper products. Let me give you some examples. Ladies and gentlemen, under the Stamp Act, if you were walking around and had a newspaper, if you had legal documents, if you had a deck of playing cards, any of those items would have to have a government stamp which said you tax. Please be aware the stamp tax was very small. It was like something like a quarter, an eighth of a pence. So, I mean, literally, it's like the smallest denomination possible. Ladies and gentlemen, the last thing you will need to know is the Stamp Act is philosophically different. I didn't tell you, but the Sugar Act is an indirect tax. What does that mean? The government taxed the trade companies. The government taxed the businesses. The businesses paid the tax, and what would they do with the price of their product? They would raise it. When you went to the store, was there any indication of the word tax? No. Ladies and gentlemen, the Stamp Act is what we call a direct tax. Where you would pick up a piece of paper to buy the newspaper, literally there would be a stamp that says tax. Can anyone tell me what is a direct tax we all do today? When you go shopping. What's that called? It's right at the bottom of the receipt, right? They don't hide it from you. And in fact, it not only says the word tax, it says the percent, how much you're paying, correct? For those of you who don't know, when you buy cigarettes, there are taxes on there that are, that are collected by the, the, the tobacco companies. That would be indirect. Whenever you see the word tax, that is direct. Ladies and gentlemen, the English simply want to pay for the proclamation. It's a very small amount of money, 60,000 pounds, I'm going to be very honest. George Grenville, for his life, cannot imagine a problem. There are no, no new enforcements. And what you want to be able to point out, folks, is England doesn't think they need any. England is not expecting a problem. England believes the Sugar Act was effective. Would you please protest? And ladies and gentlemen, as you look at this chapter, when you look at our list, this is where items are going to start getting more problematic. We go to court again. This time, it'll be Patrick Henry. In fact, oftentimes, like when you watch TV shows, they actually give Patrick Henry the credit. James Otis did it first, Patrick Henry goes back. Once again, we see the slogan, hand of what? No taxation without representation. And please understand, what is the difference between Patrick Henry and James Otis? Patrick Henry tries to make the argument that it is not fair, it is illegal for England to tax the counties because we have our own parliaments. Patrick Henry tries to argue that if the counties are represented in their county, for England to tax us at well, it would be like double taxation. Does everybody understand that? Basically what England is saying is all that land is English, we're going to do what we want. We want money, you have protection, you pay for it. Okay? So England's like the mafia? Well, no, what England would argue is they're simply doing what any government does. Let's be honest, you have two ways to do it. One, the colonists are fighting for legal precedent. Or two, what are the colonies? What's the other option? So one option is the colonists are a bunch of astute, educated lawyers who believe in no taxation without representation. What is the other reason for the slogan and all the whining and complaining? They don't want to pay taxes. Ladies and gentlemen, salutary neglect. You never made us pay before. It's like spoiled children. 
Some of you have seen spoiled children in a store. You know, the ones that cry because they want a toy. The ones who put up a fit. Maybe some of you in this room are spoiled children. Spoiled children get what they want, correct? So if you think of it from that regard, the slogan is much more designed to be a legal argument of why we shouldn't have to pay. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. Number two, I often do not put enough emphasis on number two. It is really logical to argue that number two is where all the problems begin. Number two, and again, these are protests under the Stamp Act, is called the Stamp Act Congress. It meets on June 6th. Um, if, if you need, we are in 1765. Let me give you a couple things about the Stamp Act Congress. What's the big deal? For the first time, since the failed attempt by Benjamin Franklin, hand, what was that called? No hand, but okay. That was the Albany plan. That's okay. That's the Albany plan, right? For the first time since the Albany attempt, the counties come together and notice their common issue is taxation. The counties gather to discuss what is our opinion, what is our issue, our concern with the taxes. Folks, here's the crazy thing, and think how common it is today. What most people believe, why does the Stamp Act create such a fuss? Maybe because it's direct, but maybe there's a completely different reason. It's a tax on paper. <coughs> Folks, what kind of person did England accidentally or intentionally tax? Which people use paper? Business owners, rich people, how about educated people? Folks, in order to be taxed, I mean, you probably have to be to read, right? Maybe you own a business. These are the people who run the colonies. These are people with money. So they form a Stamp Act Congress where they get together. These are the rich people who come together. And folks, what technically does a Stamp Act Congress do? Hold your breath here. They will write a written petition. Yes. Hands. Have any of you in this room ever signed a petition? Really? Only a couple? Most, the rest of you must be those I just want to avoid trouble. You know, a petition, there's something going on, so you sign your name. Folks, a petition is a legal way to show disclosure. It's a raise to explain and try to articulate your concern, but it's not very confrontational, correct? It's not very aggressive. Why would that make sense that this is what the Stamp Act Congress would do? Why does this seem like a logical protest for this group of people? I told you that the Stamp Act is the rich, successful people. They have the most to lose. If you challenge, threaten, or attack the king, he could get angry. Does everybody understand that? There are two more. Now, let's see how smart you are. Folks, the next two protests, nobody, and I mean nobody, takes responsibility for. However, they will remarkably be organized after June, and they will spread to every single county. Logic would seem to dictate, where did these ideas come from? The only organization of the 13 counties was the Stamp Act Congress, correct? So what we want to understand is there's two more ideas that appear to be brought up. They just don't want names signed. Number three, the Sons of Liberty. Remember before we had the question about what the soldiers were for? Well, here we go. Folks, the Stamp Act Congress are a group of people who are not happy. These are going to be kind of like a club. They're going to be an organization who believes the only way to get attention, to show displeasure, is with acts of humiliation, intimidation, and violence. The Sons of Liberty is an illegal organization. It is generally believed that it was organized by two members of the Stamp Act Congress, John Hancock, the presiding officer or president, and Samuel Adams. Yes, fine beer is named after him. What most people believe is members of the Stamp Act Congress would go to the local pub or tavern. Maybe they would buy a round and they would start talking about the unjust practices of England. They would get the people all fired up, and before you know it, the people would go running out and do something stupid like toilet papering and egging. It seemed justified at the time. 
folks, if you were a member of a Sons of Liberty, did you wear a badge or a, some sort of identification? No. What are their most common tactics? Humiliation. Does anybody remember what the humiliation, the tactic? That is called tarring and feathering. Who's their number one target, folks? Who got tarred and who got feathered? That's why the soldiers are sent. And if you don't understand, think how fun this would be. You guys think TPing is fun? You take the tax collector, you throw him in a big vat of tar, kind of sticky, boily goo. You then pull him out of tar, you throw him down on a big pile of feathers, and you make him run up and down the street. He'd look like a great big chicken. Ha 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 ha. The only problem is the tar would often stick to the skin, and sometimes if a person's face would be completely covered, they could actually suffocate. So please be aware, tarring and feathering could be today much more of a much more serious physical event. Number two is intimidation. That's simply threats. And number three would get into acts of violence. It could be attacks on property, or it could even be beating up or eventually killing. That will be later. Yeah? So John Hancock and Samuel Adams were like rich people? Oh, yeah. Remember, we, I thought if I didn't allegedly the reason we allegedly is eventually England is going to try to crack down on this group, and those are the two men England is going to hold responsible. The two men, of course, would deny it completely. And folks, there is a fourth protest. The fourth protest is a boycott. <coughs> Very clever idea. Folks, the idea is the colonists decide that until England repeals the Stamp Act, any product that said made in England any product that was being brought over by the English would be boycotted. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this does two things. English companies begin to lose money. Ladies and gentlemen, English companies, notice the word English companies preside or live where? That means they have the right to vote or have influence over who? Parliament. Number two, ladies and gentlemen, for the weeks and months of the boycott, as the colonists are boycotting what do the colonists have to learn how to do? Make this stuff themselves. Make their own. Trade with the French. Trade with the South. Spanish. Ladies and gentlemen, during the boycotts, the colonies are experimenting with self-sufficiency, kind of like Massachusetts had. Did anyone take a wild guess which one of the four protests will be the most effective? Please star, circle the boycott. The boycott works. England loses money. The people in England complain. 